Good day. I thought we'd have a look at two uh, QRP radios that seeing that I, while I still have them in my possession, uh, we've looked at the G80, that's a Zygu G80. This one on the right hand side is an older uh, QRP radio made by ICOM, uh, it's called the IC703. Uh, the later version I think was the HF60 uh, 6 meter, con uh, so that HF and 6 meters. Uh, this particular model is the earlier one, so it just has HFs that's up to 30 megahertz. So it covers medium wave all the way up to uh, 30 megahertz. Um, again, both really designed as amateur radio uh, transceivers, and I'll be using them both for shortwave and for amateur radio. Um, the one on the right-hand side has surprisingly a large number of features. Many people think it's just a low-power version of the ICOM IC706, which is a much older radio that came out, which was a 100-watt radio, uh, which covered VHF, UHF, and HF, uh, all the amateur bands, so a very handy piece of equipment. This one, actually, the only thing it shares in common with it, basically, is the faceplate. Uh, not the display, but just the faceplate, the layout of the faceplate. Otherwise, the internals and all that are completely different from the 706. Uh, this, the ICOM 703, I'll just call it the IC703 from now on. IC703 puts out 10 watts uh, against the Zygu's 80, um, 20 watts, the G90 is 20 watts. The other feature the G90 has, as we've already looked at, is the very colorful display with the waterfall and also the um, spectrum graph so you can see the spectrum display in real time so if you move the dial as i think i demonstrated my other one the other video the actual um it follows your where you tune to the, the actual it moves with you as you as you tune the icom actually has what they call uh, a band display band scan i think that's the word they use band scan feature which is somewhat similar it will do a scan of the band and it will show a graph uh, a bar graph of all the stations that it picks up uh, it's a static one so it does a run and then stops and then there's a marker underneath which is quite a nice feature so you can move your dial to one of the um, bar graphs which is indicating a station and then you will be on that station uh, the um, G90 doesn't have that. The other more fancier radios have what you call a touch screen, and you can actually touch onto the waterfall display, the white line that's running down, and it will move you to that frequency. With the uh, Zygu, it doesn't have that. The other thing which the ICOM has and the Zygu doesn't have is a CW memory keyer. Now, most people operate QRP being very low power. They will tend to use Morse code, or CW is the actual modulation, continuous wave modulation, and that gives them uh, a lot more um, able to make better contacts and with SSB with using a voice uh, modulation. Uh, CW gets through much better even with only 5 watts. So the CW memory clear is very useful. For instance, the, on the Zygu you'll have to use your key, whether it's electronic key or hand key, and type out CQ, CQ, ZS1, JHG, QRZ, you know, whatever you do, or um, KN or whatever you call it, the end of the CW call, and you have to repeat that three times. Now, with the, the ICOM, you can actually program that all in, and then you just press the button and it runs through that. And when somebody calls you, uh, they, um, it has break in, so the, it, will, it will break, and then you can hear the, the, it will receive what's incoming and pause the transmission. So that's uh, very handy and a lot of um, CW buffs actually like that. It's one of the shortfalls of the G90 for portable QRP use. Uh, this also, the ICOM has various scan settings such as memory scan, program scan, and that's also quite a nice feature, especially if you're interested in listening on HF or even on, on uh, hand bands, you can scan up and down the band to see what frequent what's going on. Uh, the Zygu doesn't have that feature. The other thing the ICOM has is a one megahertz tuning step. I'll just demonstrate it here quickly. 
If you look at the radio now, you'll find that that little pointer or little arrow is just above the 7. And I press it back, it'll go back to where it was before on the 10 scale. So it moves up to the 1 meg, now it's back on the 10 kilohertz, uh, 1 kilohertz, sorry, 1 kilohertz scale. So that's quite nice, it enables you to zoom through the band very quickly for short wave. The filters in the ICOM are fixed. You've got three filters, a 9, a 4 and a 2.4 kilohertz filter. That's the wide, medium and narrow, which are is quite a good choice and it works pretty well. Whereas in the Zygu you can vary them, they're completely variable to whatever setting you want. The Zygu has a speech compressor which I mentioned in my previous video and so does the ICOM but the ICOM's one has a variable level output which is also very handy so you can vary the amount of compression that you are uh, inputting. Um, let me just see what else it also has. They both have a SWR scan so that's again related to hams who want to check the antennas and see what the antennas are doing. I think both radios bypass, the, or they both have built-in automatic antenna tuners and both radios bypass that I think when they do the SWR scan. Uh, so you can see what your actual SWR is on your antenna. The reason you do that is so that you get put your maximum power output. When you have a high standing wave ratio to protect the finals of the radios, the power is chopped back on the radio. So you will no longer put out 10 or 20 watts, you'll put out perhaps 3 or 4 watts or maybe 5 watts and that's it. Um, the both the antenna tuners are wide wide SWR so they can handle quite a high SWR so they're very comparable there. The uh, Zygu G90 has variable power output from 1 to 20, 1, 2, 3 etc all the way up whereas the uh, power on the uh, ICOM 703 is half a watt, 1 watt, 2.5, 5 and 10 watts. Uh, the other thing that the ICOM has that the Zygu doesn't have, it has DSP, so it has Digital Signal Processing, which consists of auto notch that takes out a interfering signal nearby to where you're transmitting, close to where you're transmitting, and a noise limiter, uh, which is variable, and a noise blanker, which is also variable. So. Um, it's, it's got, the, I think the G90 has only got the noise blank. It doesn't have a noise limiter or an auto notch as far as I'm aware. So that's quite nice. The menus on this ICOM, you can get through to them here. So that gives you your DSP menus. There you can see A and F auto notch filter, noise reduction and noise reduction level. And so it's, it's a fairly simple, this is your main menus. You, you press and then the individual buttons down below here are used for setting the various settings and that one will scroll through the number of settings and so on. So it's very easy to operate once you get used to it, not a problem with it. Other nice feature of the ICOM radio has RF gain and control as well as RF shift. The RF gain is up here and the shift control is down there. So those are first very useful features for interfering signals, uh, which unfortunately the G90 lacks. So the G90 does have an RF gain, sorry, it has an RF gain, but it doesn't have an IF shift. So the extra feature there in the ICOM is just the IF shift, the RF gain, as we saw in the G90, that does have that. Okay, so I thought that we'd just give a quick comparison. Let's just listen to the audio. Hopefully the, yeah, the signals are still there. Let's listen on the... Zygu first of all. And our well's coming through is quite far away anyway. Can you hear that? So you can hear the ICOM has a much fuller sound. Admittedly it has a bigger speaker. But it, it's uh, not as trebly as the as the Zygu, so uh, that's also quite a nice feature. The cases, the depth of the cases that they're in is is virtually the same. I think the Baiku, the the G ninety is about five inches across uh, in width, and the Icom about six and a half. So it's only one and a half inches uh, wider. 
uh, and the height looks like it's more or less the same on both radios. So, uh, the current draw on them, I, I haven't compared the current draw on them, but the ICOM is very, has exceptionally low current drain, and in fact what it will do, it will run down to even like 9, I think it's 9, 9 volts or even lower than that, and then it just cuts the power from 10 watts to 5 watts maximum output to preserve the current and the lights. It has various power saving features that are built in. I'm not sure that the Zygu has that or that. I, I, I just have to discover, but I don't think it does. Okay, just a quick look. Um, also, the tuning knob, very nice on the, um, on the ICOM. Very smooth running, no not notches and things like that. So you can set it to exactly where you want it to go to. No detents and a nice free running VFO knob. As you can see, they could have put a bigger one on the Zygu. There's plenty of room for it. Uh, it just rearranged things a bit better instead of that tiny little clickety click knob. So uh, I'm very happy with the ICOM 703. Uh, it's been lent to me for a long term loan. So for my use, I'm very pleased about that. They're by the same person who has the G90. Okay, just a short chat about the two radios, uh, the older model one. Of course, the prices, if you look at the prices, I think the used prices in America are about $400 approximately for the ICOM. That would be the one with the uh, six meter band, the newer one than this one that I have. And the Zygu, I think, is about 400 and let's just say four thirty dollars rounded up more or less. So, you know, from that point of view, obviously there's no real contest between the two. Um, if you're looking for a um, QRP radio, a modern QRP radio, the Zygu would be the better buy. But for operating convenience, definitely the ICOM, as far as I'm concerned, beats the Zygu hands down. Okay, cheers for now.